Denis Oliek on his head. After Kenya's participation in the 2004 World Cup in Tunisia, many fans hoped that it was the dawn of the new era in soccer. A new page opened in the soccer chapter in the country. But since then, the standards of the game have sunk to the lowest level. Empty stadiums and wrangles have dominated the soccer scene. Something urgent was needed to lift the state of the game. Extreme Sports provided the answer with a Super 8 soccer tournament going back to the roots where former and current top soccer stars in the country operated from. The key motivator in the venture is the attractive cash prices offered for the teams. The intention is to create employment opportunities for the youth through the tournament, especially in the MTA, where soccer is the most popular sport. The purpose we are holding this tournament is basically to promote soccer in Kenya, number one. Number two, we want to discover tap and nurture talent. We want to make sure that uh, if they're good players at the grassroots level, they're discovered and that they are developed. Extreme Sports Limited invited grassroots teams from all the eight constituencies to participate in the tournament. 160 teams were expected with 95 teams making the cut. Others were knocked out due to technicalities of the tournament. To show the seriousness of the event, Extreme Sports empowered a board of trustees to keep custody of the prize money to be won. The total cash prize is 890,000 shillings. The tournament winners get 250,000 shillings, first runners-up 100,000 shillings and the other constituency champions, six of them 50,000 shillings each. Above that, the three top teams in each constituency win 10,000 shillings each. All the preliminary games are played on a knockout basis in a full 90-minute match. Eight sponsors came on board in support of the tournament. The sponsors are Mobicom, Lock7, Comutel, Simba Telcom, Celsaras, Vitec Options, Samchi Telcom and Nation FM. The tournament was launched at the Jericho Upper Grounds, popularly known as Camp Toyoyo in Makadara constituency. The bulk of the Kenyan internationals, including current Harambe Stars captain Musa Otieno, started their soccer careers on this pitch. The field is in the heart of Jericho Estate in Eastlands. Match number one pitted homeboys Black Mamba against Maringo Bombers. The launch of the tournament attracted a large crowd that also included the media. Joginda Ochola scored the first goal of the tournament to give Maringo Bombers the lead. Black Mamba had to wait until the 67th minute to find the equaliser. With the game ending at 1-1, it was straight to penalties to decide the winner. Black Mamba went through 3-2 after all teams took their five kicks. From Akadara constituency, Black Mamba and Bejos were favourites. Bejos, sponsored by Harambe Stars captain Musa Otieno, were under pressure after Black Mamba's win. They took on Jericho All-Stars in the opening match. A lot of excitement was on the sides as fans, including area MP Ruben Dolo, waited for more goals which were not forthcoming. The match also had to be decided on penalties. Both teams took seven kicks with Bejo scoring six and All-Stars managing just five. Bejo met Black Mamba in the finals with an early goal seeing Bejo through to the final. The match was watched by Harambe Stars captain Musa Otieno just a few minutes before he took his flight to his South Africa base. I think with the flair which you're getting from the, the community balls or with the Super 8, we don't see it in the Premier League. And for us at least, we just need to go back to the roots and see what is down there. And I just want to say thanks to the people who have organized the Super 8. I think I know we'll, we'll go, we'll get, we are going to get so many Musa Otienos and uh, George Waveros and Denis Oliech. 14 teams joined the Super 8 Bad Wagon in Kasarani constituency where matches were played at the Babadogo Open Grounds. Kariobangi Sports had the most difficult time in the first round against Tasca Youth, a feeder team to Premier League side Tasca FC. Kariobangi Sports trailed Tasca Youth nil one till a last minute grasp effort produced an equalizer. As the rules state, a draw is decided on penalties. Kariobangi Sports scored all their five while Tasca managed just three. The semis were tough on all the teams, but the quack of the two was the clash between Kariobangi Sports and Metro Sports. It was penalties again, and it was Kariobangi Sports who carried the day. The final between Kariobangi Sports and Kariobangi Sharks was too close to call. 
No goals after 80 minutes, then Sharks got an opportunity and used it. The goal silenced the home crowd, sending Karyubangi Sharks to the Super 8 Grand Finale. In our area, Madare has established the youth program. So that's why you can see we had very young and talented players in our team. Most of the players have traveled with the youth sides of Madare to Norway. That's why the, the standard of the game there was high. Across town in Dagoreti constituency, it was straight into the quarterfinals as eight teams battled for supremacy. Four of the eight teams, Kakamega Youth, Kakamega United, Wild Hope Youth and Dagoreti Green Santos had an equal chance of making it all the way to the finals. Kabiro Youth opened the challenge against DYC at the Kawangwari Primary School pitch. Kabiro twice came from behind to level the scores. The second goal coming at the stroke of full time. Santos, backed by a star striker Dennis Oliech, opened their campaign against an equally determined World Cup youth. It was Santos who drew the first blood early in the first half. The second goal followed moments later. Despite the strong wind, the match was full of entertainment, Santos winning 2-0. The final of the Dagoretti constituency was a local derby pitting Santos and Kakamega United. The presence of Dennis Oliech must have inspired Santos as they took the lead in the first minute of the match. But Kakamega were patient and equalized 10 minutes later. Santos again took the lead with 6 minutes to the end of the first half. It took 15 minutes of the second half for Kakamega to equalize again from an impossible angle. The pressure was on Santos but then against the run of play they got the third goal. When all seemed lost for Kakamega, they got a bitterly disputed stunning third goal deep into injury time. The final had to be decided on spot kicks. Both teams took seven spot kicks, with Santos converting six and Kakamega five. Santos qualify for the final. Mimi kama shabiki kwa Santos, nimefurahia na sijafurahia mashabiki wa timu kuko sana. Team kama Kakamega ni timu tumekuwa nao. Embakasi constituency had the largest entries with 18 teams. It was at the quarter final stage that the Giants stuck out their necks. Dandora All-Stars playing at their home ground at Tomboya Primary School stood head and shoulders above the rest. In their match against Mantale, they kicked off in style scoring in the first minute. Before Mantale could recover, it was 2-0. Dandora ran rings around the hapless Mantale, racing to a 3-0 lead at halftime. They went on to win 4-0. Other qualifiers were Komarok Rangers, Umoja Renegade and Galatasaray. The crowd was a bit uh, bigger, the estimate was at least uh, 8,000. But coming the final day, on 27, we had 15,000 spectators, which were on the pitch and it was full. Even everyone was uh, asking if we can have such a crowd uh, of the assets, why can't we make it even for our national team or our stadium for our Premier League teams to be having such a crowd so that we can apply the standard of football in this country? In Stare constituency, 10 teams tried out their luck. It boiled down to Huruma FC, Huruma Queens, Umeme FC, and Madare Outreach in the semis. Outreach belonged to Huruma FC 3 1 at the semi finals. To watch was the match beating Huruma FC against Umeme. Huruma got a first minute lead in the first post match. Meme had to wait till the second half to equalize from a superbly taken free kick. The match was decided on penalties again, Meme having the upper hand, but they were disqualified for fielding ineligible players. Ruma, having a second chance, crushed Mathare Outreach 3 0 to romp into the finals. Iron strikers from Langata qualified among the 12 teams that registered. Langata was the green zone as all the teams were virtually unknown. In Westlands, top seeds Kangemi Youth and Alliance Fonces fell at the quarterfinal stage. There were 10 teams and with the exit of the two, the race was thrown wide open. Kangemi Youth fell to Brook United while Alliance Fonces went down against U3 FC. Brook were humiliated 5-0 by Leviticas in the semis. After the busy month-long knockouts, the eight coordinators had almost completed their task. They are not the only ones to benefit as the employment opportunities in the tournament were many. I was a lot of people in this work. I was a lot of people who were doing their work. I was a lot of people who were doing their work. All the eight teams got a sponsor for the final with each one of them receiving branded new uniforms. The support for the tournament was enormous. 
Other than the eight sponsors for the teams, Nairobi Sports House Limited gave out the main winner's trophy as well as 10 footballs, all valued at 65,000 shillings. The other balls for the tournament were donated by Safaricom Foundation, a public charitable trust established two years ago to spearhead Safaricom Limited's corporate social responsibilities program. The 800 balls were valued at 640,000 shillings. I think the fact that they've targeted the, the youth, the disadvantaged youth, the ones who this message needs to get across to, um, and doing it through sports as well is a, a very good and innovative way of doing it. Within the Safaricom Foundation, on behalf of my fellow trustees, I'd like to say that we're very pleased and very proud to be involved in this. On the D-Day, the stage was all set for the home stretch. Seven matches are to be played on this pitch. The draw pitted the Giants against the underdogs. Teams were in high spirits as they held their early warm-ups. Their fans were close by on the stands. With everything in place, two matches set the ball rolling. Kariobangi Sharks vs Dandora All-Stars and Kiambi Warriors vs Iron Strikers on pitch two. Both matches kick off at the same time. <laughs> Iron Strikers won the first match, hitting Kiambio 2-0. Kariobangi stunned Dandora with an early goal, but they lost 3-2 in a very entertaining match. Kuruma and Bejos met in the third quarter final. Both teams are drawn by a noisy band of their fans. Only one goal was scored. Bejos peeping Kuruma 1 nil to sail into the semi finals. Dagoret Green Santos' impressive run in the tournament continues as they took an early lead against Leviticus. But the teams were level at the stroke of full time. <laughs> For the second time in the tournament, Santos are in a penalty shootout. The Viticals pull the first upset with a 6-5 shootout win. The entertainment galore for the fans took over as they engaged in their own competition. Dandora and Iron Strikers locked horns as the teams entered the semi-final stage. With the crowd swelling on the stands, the matches were tense. Great goals witnessed as Iron Strikers win 2-1. Leviticas and Bejos play to a barren draw, forcing the second shootout of the day involving Leviticas. Leviticas once again triumph on the sport kicks. After very long times, Jonathan and Eko organized DV. Discipline in Mekwai, Zile Vita Vitamini Zamtani, Zimekwaziko, but Zajo Mikitolea, Nana Prime Koton Amzuri. The opportunity to Mepata. The tournament was not just about football. The fans who had now passed the 15,000 mark had something to look forward to. The team yet to make a final. Not to know what kick a combat in a nalo. Eh, I don't know what's who Ah, I'm in the quad. You're out now. Out now. I don't know. 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 The MCs of the day, Big Ted Kwaka and KJ, were busy churning out information on the dangers of HIV and AIDS whenever they had a chance to. And as the big final drew nearer, the entertainment scene took over. From necessary noise, to Red Sun, 
And the hilarious ridiculous, the fans were kept on their feet. The main final was witnessed by cabinet ministers, KFF officials and all other sponsors. The crowd was amazing, hitting the 15,000 mark. Dominic Luvaga opened the scores for Leviticus. Shortly after the break, it was 2 nil. Butenderitu pulled one back for Iron Strikers, but Leviticus held on to be crowned the first Super Age champions. The second edition of the Super A tournament has already started with Safaricom, one of the sponsors giving 1 million Kenya shillings.